where someone a media business has a an active community on guild we see that they get about between five and 45 percent of event attendees are sourced via the community Hello and welcome to EN Engage. Today I'm joined by Ashley Friedland, founder of Guild, who's going to talk to us through some of the best practice tips for creating and nurturing communities in events. Hi, Ashley. Hiya. Good to see you, Emily. Good to see you. So first of all, um, why do events need online communities? Um, what would the business benefits for having an online community be? Uh, I guess there's, there's a couple of main ones. There's the editorial insights so by having a community particularly a year-round community where you can see people you know what they're talking about in the market what are the hot topics what are the trends what's the language people are using about it um you know that to inform and improve your actual event planning and your agenda setting and also to find speakers and sponsors so there's that bit also the data you get so when people register for community you know depending what profile fields and things you have it might well be more up to date or richer than than the data you just get from event reg you know, event registration data which can go out of date quite quickly or just lies frankly sometimes um the main one i guess is driving event attendance uh so using the community as a way to you know sell more tickets get more registrations and get people to turn up because they're more kind of emotionally invested in the brand or the event. And then finally, um, sponsor or exhibitor, you know, added value to their sponsorship or even upsell, you know, or cross sell. So you can have presence and lead generation in the community itself, which can be year round rather than just for the event. Uh, so it can be monetized that way. Brilliant. So have you got any uh, examples or data on how communities can drive attendance into events? Yeah, we've got, I mean, across in Guild, we have, um, well, over 6,000 groups now, but um, where someone, a media business has a an active community on Guild, we see that they get about between 5 and 45% of event attendees are sourced via the community. So and that's quite a broad range, but it does show that, you know, almost up to half might come from the event. And um, that's where you've got kind of tracking in place to sort of see, to attribute it to a source to the, uh, to the community. Um, typically emails, the other big one, or usually the biggest one still. Um, also, we did one, this is just a specific one we did recently, just a community for three weeks, temporary one around a, a summit event, where of 100 odd attendees, 60% joined the community. So it's not everyone, but sort of 60%. And within that, uh, those 60 people, there are 100 new connections made, which is an average of 1.6 new connections per member in the online community before the event so in terms of adding value to the networking you know that's a bunch of new connections made before the event itself and on average there were four and a half direct messages sent between those event attendees before they even arrived at the event via the online community so again in terms of getting that networking in particular but the sort of excitement anticipation communication connections being built via the community before the event i think that's you know very interesting and valuable too um, so would you do you think that the community should be um, a year round 365 um, thing that happens all year or temporary in the run up to the event um, more short lived? Yeah, well, obviously, sort of 365 and year round is, is the sort of buzzword at the moment. Um, and but actually, I think if you if you brand the community to the event brand, then usually it makes sense to make it temporary or we we talk about pop-up communities so because the challenge is if you anchor the community around the event brand the truth is people just aren't interested in the event attendees or sponsors all year round much as you might like them to be so we tend to recommend that if say you were had a I don't know, engineering event at the engineering summit that if you had an engineering summit related community it should be temporary however the year-round community you could have it should be more industry themed so not based on the event brand but it could be called you know the engineers collective the future of engineering engineering pioneers leaders whatever it is and it's about discussing you know the day-to-day -day, you know trends challenges opportunities in engineering and then when the event comes round you can drop that into the community as you could a piece of content as you could a training course and things so usually we would say don't brand the um the community to the event itself and if you do, then probably it should only be a temporary one. 
That's really interesting. And then perhaps that um, it's a good idea to have kind of multiple communities and communities within communities. So the, the wider um, industry community um, and then more specific communities for specific events to drive that attendance. Yeah, exactly. So you could have your core year round community into which you can drop all sorts of stuff. If the event is sort of big enough or warrants it, you can have also a spin off effectively like a subgroup. So where all the talk and noise and networking is confined just to the event itself and doesn't you know, appear in the core community. But sometimes if you've got smaller events, you do want that to be seen in the wider core community because it you know, there's a sort of fear of missing out. You can see these things going on. It promotes it to the entire kind of community. So, yeah, I think you can, and we do see a mixture of both. Brilliant. So what are some good ways of making sure that the event and the community support each other? Yeah, it's interesting. This can be quite a challenge, this, because the events people obviously are super focused and super busy on plan A, which is, you know, the event, and it happens at a point in time. So it's a very linear process, whereas communities tend to be sort of always on. Um, and often say if you've got a different team managing the community from the event, the danger is they sort of drift apart and, and they're not aligned. So I think part of the solution to that is, is sort of strategic, as in you need someone sort of senior level sponsorship and buy in to kind of make sure the team know that it's important. These two things need to kind of work hand in hand. Also sort of ownership. So typically in a, an event related community, you want editorial people in there like, you know, you want marketing people in there, you want commercial people in there but you, and community management maybe, but you need someone who can sit across both the event and the community. Now, what is that job title? Can be various things, but maybe portfolio director would be a common one in the sort of events and media space. But you do need that person who can kind of look across both and make sure they stay aligned. Mm -hmm. And then tactically, it's, you know, before the event uh, in the community, you're doing the networking, sneak peeks of content coming up, you know, new session announcements and things in the build up during the actual event you need to make sure that you even you talk about the community you make sure people are kind of using it you know you could do live polls in the community which you feed through live into the event um, and also after the event you can do things like get the speakers to post their decks to the community offer ideally to answer questions in the community that they didn't have time to answer during the live event itself that's a really powerful way to get people to join it extends the value of the event you know, before and after the event itself, both for attendees and sponsors. I think after is quite often the bit where it gets forgotten, isn't it? There's there's, a, yeah. there's more incentive to kind of keep that interest beforehand. Um, and then from the event side, it's really, it's done and forgotten, but you've got to kind of keep building that that community back, I guess. Yeah. Brilliant. So um, what ways can you add value to sponsors or exhibitors through the community then? Well, you can if you have a year round, you know, sort of core community, obviously you can extend the time window of exposure, branding, lead generation they get beyond just the event itself to, to a year round relationship if you wanted. You can do co-branding, obviously, so sort, of, sort of visual things. You can make announcements within the community about, you know, new exhibitor of the day or so and so has just launched this interesting new product. You can even do video, you know, interviews, panels, Q and A, ask me anything sessions with with sponsors, or you know, like a, a panel type thing where they contribute their expertise along other invited guests. You can even make direct introductions. So obviously, a lot of events where they do those sort of hosted by or one to one meetings, you can do equivalents of that online. So where you literally introduce you know, a buyer and a seller, maybe um, directly, you can obviously link out to content that or thought leadership webinar, their own events, maybe that sponsors of yours are doing. So all sorts of ways, you know, which is basically about generating awareness of the sponsors within your community and helping them generate leads. Mm, brilliant. OK, um, well, that's excellent. That's some really great tips um, I think you've given our community um, here. So that's great. I wonder if there's any um, useful resources you can um, provide to anyone who wants to learn a bit more about best practices of events and communities. Uh, yes. Well, there's um, the, the MASH Media. You guys have the Events 365 community, which is on Guild, of course, um, and definitely recommend joining that because it is a community, you know, so of event organizers talking about, you know, this shift to, you know, 365 engagement, hybrid events, online, offline, etc. Probably this way, if you just Google Events 365 Guild, it should come up. Um, we've also uh, also we're just about to publish a, a piece on sponsorship 
sponsored communities so you know so i talked about some of those ideas but what's the value proposition what's the pricing the package you can offer to sponsors exhibitors mm -hmm. and to where so you can monetize you know communities you've got um, so if you google sponsor communities guild should come up in the next uh, day or two um, otherwise go to our website and, and look in the resources section yeah, we also did um finally a, a sort of best practice guide for how to combine events with community so touching on some of the things we mentioned and that's something we add to all the time so again easiest probably if you just google how to combine events with community uh, it should come up on on the guild website and that's you know talks about you know before during and after like i say how do you make sure community and events are, are best aligned brilliant okay well thank you so much for your time ashley it's been really helpful cheers